People don't get Batman and Robin. The characters, not the movie, though that too probably. The thing that's so compelling about the relationship between Bruce Wayne and specifically the first Robin Dick Grayson is that it creates both a strong parallel between the two as well as a strong contrast. Bruce Wayne watches his parents die at the hands of a criminal when he is around 12 years old. He then happens to be in attendance when Dick Grayson experiences the exact same thing. Bruce sees a lot of himself in the boy, not like that you fucking perv, and understands exactly what he's going through. Thus, he adopts him and takes him on as his apprentice to help him cope in a way that no one ever could for him. Sure, he had Alfred and Jim, but they couldn't really relate to what he'd been through, so there was only so much they could realistically do for him. But Bruce understands what Dick is feeling and is thus better equipped to help him through it. One could argue that this is why Dick has greater potential than Bruce, because Dick has someone who knows exactly what he's been through to help him work through his issues and channel his rage into something positive, while Bruce remains submerged in his because he never had that. While his past and his issues are great motivators to compel Bruce to greater heights than most of the heroes, they simultaneously hold him back. But thanks to Bruce, Dick has that motivation without the limitation. Ultimately, Dick's origin story tells us as much about Bruce as it does Dick, and that makes their dynamic unique even among the other sidekicks. Sure, Jason is a troubled orphan and Tim lost his father to crime and Cassandra, Damien and even post-crisis Barbara have all lost or disowned their parents, but none of them have the parallel be that strong and I don't think any other mentor-sidekick relationship in DC does either. The purest distillation of how little many people understand Bruce and Dick's relationship and Batman entirely is in the world of one of Batman's most popular writers, Frank Miller. In the rightfully derided All-Star Batman and Robin, the prequel to most of Miller's other Batman works, Bruce sees a young boy witness the murder of his parents right in front of him. Bruce still remembers the exact feeling Dick's experiencing right now like it was yesterday. This version even has it be done with a gun rather than the usual tampering with their equipment to further drive the parallel home. So he goes for his Batsuit to stop the criminal. This is not Bruce Wayne. Bruce does what he does so no other child will have to endure the agony of losing their parents like he did. Bruce's first instincts might be to go and stop the bad guys, but seeing a mirror of himself in Dick, a young boy stood between the bodies of his murdered parents, should redirect Bruce to instead approach the boy and let him know that he's strong enough to endure this and that those responsible will be brought to justice. Dick should be his top priority, not the criminals. He might even intentionally avoid going after those responsible until Dick is ready to join him and get that catharsis that Bruce never did. So it's galling that Frank Miller had Bruce see Dick's parents die, abduct him, call him retarded and force him to eat rats. And this all culminates in Dick becoming a violent murderer who Bruce Heihachi Mishima's into a volcano. And people still view Frank's Batman as one for other versions to aspire to? Fuck off. He's as on the pulse with regards to Batman as Zack, the no killing rule is unrealistic, my Batman could get sodomized in prison, Snyder is. If you liked this video, why not subscribe and support me on Patreon like these fine people here? If not, then make sure to share it with your enemies so they too can get thrown into a volcano by Batman. Seriously, what the fuck was up with that? Today's recommended video is Frank Miller's All-Star Batman and Robin What Went Wrong by Owen Likes Comics. He talks about how Aspar may have been intended to have greater meaning with regards to the Millerverse version of the dynamic duo but didn't get the chance to because Frank was busy inserting the entire Batman supporting cast into the 10 issues it lasted. 